Hey, good morning, church. We are so glad that you're joining with us today. We want to start out worshiping today, and we just want to start out singing about the great victory that we have in our Savior. So join with us. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind? It was my tomb till I met you. I was breathing, but now alive. All my failures I tried to hide. It was my tomb. Till I met you. Welcome. We're so glad that you're here with us this morning or wherever and whenever you're watching this. You picked a great week to be with us today. Uh, we're starting a brand new series this morning. I know it's going to be helpful and clarifying for, for everybody who tunes into it. So thank you for being here. A few things that I want you to know about. The first is this week, every weekday as a church, we're going to be praying together every day at noon. We know that, that you have been praying throughout this whole crisis, and we want to encourage you to continue to pray, to not quit crying out to God for, for people in need. So every day we're going to send you a push notification uh, and a Facebook post right before noon to remind you to stop wherever you're at at noon and, and pray, and we'll have different things to pray for each day of the week. And, and just know that when you stop and take a few minutes to pray, uh, hundreds of other people uh, in different houses and in different 
place as we'll be praying with you. So make sure you get engaged with that. Uh, the second thing I want you to know is I want to encourage you to download our church's app. Uh, you can do that by searching CCCOH on the, on the Apple App Store or, or Crossroads Community Church Ohio on the Android App Store. And if you do that, you're going to get access to the sermon notes for today. You're going to see the verses that Jerry's going to be covering. Uh, you can stay up to date with things that are happening at Crossroads. And it's also the easiest way to give online during this time. And I want to thank you for continuing to support the mission of Crossroads. People are sending in checks, they're dropping off checks, they're giving online, it's, and it's all going towards that mission that we have to help people know Jesus, grow in their faith, and go and do great things. So thank you for that. We're gonna continue in worship here in a moment, and we're gonna sing a song called Christ Be Magnified. And, and I love this song because this song answers the question, what if creation could speak? Oh, what if the mountains could cry out? What if the oceans could sing? What if animals could talk? What would they say? And it makes the point that, well, everything was made through Christ and everything was made for Christ. And, and, and so it, it all already cries out, Christ be magnified. That's what it was made for. That, that's what creation was made to do, to make much of, to glorify Christ. And that's what you were made to do. And that's what I was made to do. And, and that's what our church was made to do. And, and so we're going to sing out and we're going to magnify Christ this morning. And, and we can do that whether we're gathered all together in a room or whether we're scattered in our homes like we are this morning. Uh, we can do that whether we're on the couch with our family or whether we're still in bed and, and you're watching this on your phone. We were meant to, with our lives and with our words, cry out, Christ be magnified. It's what we were meant to do. And one day, when our Savior calls us home, that's what we'll still do. We'll cry out with the army of angels, Christ be magnified, and we'll live eternally towards that end. And so let's lift up his name and no other name this morning. And let's live for him and no one else. Make this your prayer. Make this your declaration this morning.
right now. My professor doesn't even believe in God and my roommate believes in this totally different religion that is honestly kind of interesting. And then there's my boyfriend who just kind of picks and chooses what he believes from different religions. I always thought I knew what I believed about God but now I'm just not sure. Well the good news is is that it doesn't really matter what you believe as long as it's sincere. I shouldn't have to tell you this but God never said that. morning church it's great to have everybody out there watching again I want to introduce myself just a little bit my name is Jerry I'm the senior pastor here at Crossroads I'm also the founder of Crossroads and that just means I got here first there's nothing big about that but I love the fact that all three campuses at least now we're able to meet digitally been very excited about what we've been able to accomplish by bringing all three campuses together and all three uh, of the campuses working towards providing you encouraging words by each Sunday giving you some teaching. And today is no different. Uh, we are just switching up our pattern just a little bit. We started out with three videos and then we went to two Sundays live sharing the sermon. And so today, uh, we start a run with a brand new series, uh, God Didn't Say That, and I'm the first one to speak, so I'm going to do the whole service today. So about eight minutes into it, I know a couple of you are going to be thinking, man, he should be done, Jerry's running over again, and you're going to start having thoughts like that. Uh, I'm not running over, I've got the whole thing today, and don't you hit that exit button either. I'm watching you, don't try to pull that either. But we've been real excited. We're excited about this service. Uh, we, we know it's been really different. It's been different for all of us. But the thing that we can all rally around is the teaching of God's Word, whether it's digitally or whether we're seated in a, a worship center, listening to it live. So today, I encourage you to really lean in wherever you are uh, and pay close attention to what we're talking about today. And over the next couple of weeks, we will continue the same journey. And uh, I hope you love the little bumper video. Just think if that really happened to us every time we just kind of took uh, liberties with what we think God said, that if an angel took a pillow and hit us on the side of the head, uh, that, would, that would clean up a lot of the misinformation that's out there. But since we don't have an angel running around with a pillow, uh, today I'm going to use the Word of God that He has given us, and I'm going to help clean up just a little bit of stuff. So our first topic today, it doesn't matter what you believe as long as you are sincere. I love the line that Timmy uh, sang during that last song. Uh, I'll hold fast to what is true. I hold fast to what is true. And so today I want to give you uh, some truth. And the truth that I want to give you today, because it does matter what you believe. The truth I want to give you today 
I think will help clear up some thoughts about salvation, will help clear up some thoughts about eternity, will clear up some thoughts about can I really know. See, in life, there are uh, three big questions, three big enemies, and I want to help you with uh, these enemies. One of life's biggest enemies uh, is death, because uh, it, it looms out there. Right now, there's a lot of conversation about that uh, in the news and everything, uh, but it is uh, one of life's biggest uh, enemies. What is life's biggest question? What are you going to do with Jesus? What are you going to do with Jesus? And life's biggest worry, what are you going to do about that one? Can I really know where I'm going to spend eternity? See, that's life's biggest worry. And so here today, I want to help you. Uh, and here's, what, here, here's how I want to help you with that. Uh, I don't want to talk about religion today. That's not what I'm talking about. Uh, so whatever religious background you have, that's not what I'm talking about today. Uh, I don't know. I'm not talking about this church or any church. I'm not talking about the church uh, being the answer to that question or your uh, religion. I'm not talking about other believers being the answer to that because we all know different people who proclaim to be Christians and we say, well, if that's what a Christian's like, I don't want to be like that. Uh, and today, uh, I'm not going to talk about your family tree. I'm not going to talk about your family tree. That we've always gone to church. Uh, we've always known Jesus. I hear people say that all the time. And today, I'm not talking about that. Today, what I am talking about is Jesus. And I'm going to talk about what God said about his son, Jesus. And so, uh, to those of you today uh, that are maybe uh, are struggling with some of the, your thoughts about, can I really know? I want you to consider the argument uh, that the Word of God makes for considering Jesus. And what this does, it removes from our lives this I hope so moment. Uh, there are lots of I hope so. When they put that, it's one thing to have hope in Christ, but it's a totally different sentence when you put I hope so together. Uh, I do because of what I do in life. I've done probably hundreds of funerals. And when I sit down with the family to talk to them about their loved one that they've lost, when we have that conversation, uh, we begin to talk about that person. And it happens more times than I wish it ever happened. As a matter of fact, I wish it never happened. But they begin to talk about the spiritual part of the person's life. And then it gets really quiet in the room. Uh, the conversation begins to die down. They no longer talk about the things that the person loves to do, which was easy to talk about, uh, what they meant to them as a family member. But they begin to talk about their spiritual life. They begin to talk about what they really believed about eternity and about Jesus. And sentences come up like this. Uh, I think he had a Bible. I think I remember him going to church for a, for a couple weeks, for a couple months. Um, you know, he was, he was a really good person. I, you know, he was always thinking about other people. And inevitably they say, I hope he's in heaven. I hope he's in heaven. Well, I don't today want us to ever uh, in our lives experience one of those funeral assurance moments is what I call them when people are starting to try to give themselves some false assurance uh, that their loved one is spending an eternity in the presence of God. Uh, today, now I want you to move beyond that. I want you today at the end of this time together for you to be able to clearly and to clarify uh, what you believe in and what you believe in about eternity. This is just too big of a thing for us to leave it to, I hope so. So I'm going to keep I'm going to keep pounding that I hope so mentality that lingers out there. And so today, uh, it does matter what you believe. But there are some there are some struggles with that. And one of those struggles in our society for us to just make such a strong declaration that it does matter what you believe. It's not about just being sincere about what you believe that when we drive stakes in the ground that are so firm like that, uh, some people even would call them so demanding. See, what has seeped into our society today, and I'm just going to talk about it briefly, uh, is the idea of tolerance, the idea of tolerance. 
uh, that we have to that we have to give everybody room for their opinion and for their opinion to be right for their opinion to be right now when scripture talked about tolerance uh, scripture directs us uh, often to that we should tolerate people that we should tolerate people that we should tolerate them with kindness uh, the, all of us uh, and don't look around the room uh, don't think about that person either there's all of us have people in our minds that we just kind of tolerate. That we don't particularly really like some of their things they do, but we're around them, we tolerate them. Uh, scripture talks about uh, that we are to tolerate people, that we are to love people, that we are to be kind to people, but not at the expense of truth. Not at the expense of truth. And when Jesus walked on this earth, he tolerated people, he loved people. Uh, he, he was kind to people. He healed people, more people than you could possibly imagine. But Jesus had no room for error, for error. That is why Jesus came, to give us a clear path, a clear understanding, to give us clarity. And so today, uh, I know uh, that, it, that it just seems reasonable uh, that we would, in a world where we have all kinds of choices, that it seems reasonable that everybody could have an opinion and everybody could be right. And what has happened is uh, it has seeped into our theology. It has seeped into our uh, morality. It has seeped into our values. And this is what tolerance does. Uh, just think how it can affect and really turn your theology upside down. I guess at this point I should give a shout out to the uh, Kid City because their theme is upside down. Uh, that will be at 10:30 uh, this morning. I hope you hang around and watch that. But it turns it all upside down. Uh, how we view marriage uh, and and how we uh, and how we uh, just view life and morality. Uh, if we tag on. If it feels good, do it. It uh, doesn't matter what you believe. We tag stuff like that on it because everybody is right. And so it creates this great big train wreck. So today, let me uh, clear up a couple things. Let's start with this. If you have downloaded the uh, app uh, or and by now and you have the outline in front of you, or if you had it before and you have the outline in front of you, uh, or if you don't, if you have a pen or a pencil, uh, as we go through this, they're going to pop up on the screen. All right, so let's take a, first, uh, take a look at the very first one. He says, what people think God said. I want to talk to you today about four things. There are a lot more of what people think God said in the area of salvation. Uh, here's the first one, that he grades on a curve, that he grades on a curve. Now, I know some of you when you were in school, man, you prayed for this. And man, you hoped that that teacher graded on a curve. There were more than one occasions when I was in college that I was hoping that that professor would have mercy and that he would grade on a curve. But there was always that one guy who was smarter than everybody else, and he messed up the whole curve. See, this that God would grade on a curve, it kind of makes sense to us. I mean, think about this for a minute. That God is good, I think that we would all agree to that. That God is good. Uh, that God in, it lives in a good place, I think we would all agree to that. So why wouldn't God let good people in? Doesn't that just kind of make sense? Good God. Man, heaven's good. So certainly, he must just let good people in in there. And so when we think about this, uh, this good thing that, hey, long as I'm good, God's going to open up heaven's door to me. Uh, see, there's, uh, there's one question uh, you can't answer. And that question is, how good is good enough? How good is good enough? Uh, because, you know, you, you don't want to do too little. Like, what if, what if you missed heaven? You could have helped one elderly person across the crosswalk, and you would have made it in heaven. But you missed it by that one act of kindness of being good. What if you were like one phone call away, that you could have made that one phone call to that shut-in, 
And that one last good act would have got you in heaven, but you missed it. You were just a little too... You really want to be just right, don't you? Because if you're like me, you know, you think about being good, you don't want to be an overachiever either. I mean, you don't want too little, and you don't want too much. You want to do it just right. But see, there's no clarification to that. Uh, see, this is... And this is too important. This, where we're going to spend eternity... It's too, too important of a question, too important of a moment in your life of where you're going to spend eternity when you take your last breath. This is just, this is just too big of a thing uh, for us to leave it. Was I, was I good enough? Because I think that if that was the system that God chose, don't you think he would have given us a clear understanding of the measurement of it? That you could be able to measure it. It takes 10 of these, 20 of those, five of these, eight of those. See, it's kind of like, uh, think of a track meet this way. Uh, and some of you ran track. Uh, I, I was on the track team. I was the worst guy on the track team, and I only did it one year. But I was on the track team for just a brief moment. Uh, it was longer than the coach wanted, I can tell you that. Uh, but I was on the track team. And you would see people line up. They would start to teach you how to line up and all that kind of stuff. And then eventually there was a starter who started the race. Now, this, this never happened because it just doesn't happen. Uh, but no one ever lined up, and they didn't know where the finish line was. Like, you didn't get down in your stance and wait for that moment for them to yell, go. <clears throat> but you didn't know where the finish line was. You didn't know where the lanes were. Uh, you didn't know what the distance was. That they just said, you just keep running and we'll see how it turns out. Just keep running and we'll see how it turns out. Now, you're really going to base your eternity on, I'm just going to keep doing good stuff and I'll see how it turns out. I don't care how sincere you are about this idea. It will not work. Because God never said, be good, and I'll let you in. Here's another one, uh, and I'm going to move through these quickly. Uh, he wouldn't send people to hell. Well, we need to come back on a Sunday and just address this. This is too big of a, and too loaded of a question for us to just uh, simply answer today. But because of the time I'm allowed to have, I can't answer it but I can, uh, completely, but I can tell you today. Uh, that there will be people who will spend an eternity in hell. I hate that thought. I simply hate that thought. I've given my life to helping people not end up there. We today are talking to you about this because we don't want a single one of you to spend an eternity in hell because it's a real, because it is real. We'll come back and talk about this some more. Here's another one uh, that, you know, that they think this is what people think about God. Uh, his standard is sincerity. His standard is sincerity. That's crazy for us to think that. That God at the end of our life would look at us and think, okay, well, you know, they were a pretty sincere person. You try that at work. Just, you know, the next time you get the opportunity to actually show up for work, because so many of you are in your homes right now. The next time you show up at, your, at work and you don't have something done, you start explaining to your boss how sincere you were about, really, you were going to get that done. Uh, students, try that at school. Uh, maybe this online thing is kind of doing that to you right now. Uh, you know, that you, you just try that on your teacher. Try that on your professor. That, hey, you know, I, I, I'm, I was sincere. Try that in your parenting. Just try to be sincere and see how it all turns out. See, that doesn't work anywhere else. So then why would we think that we would, we would accept feelings and sincerity over truth? But when we start to think about eternity, we often do that. We elevate it too high. We elevate it too high. Here's the last one, then i got to move to our last two thoughts. Uh, he has lots of paths to heaven. That God, we think and we say that, man, God just has a bunch of different pathways to heaven. That is so not true. So many people think that, think of it this way, like, you know, we're down here, 
And we always think heaven is up. That's good. I like to think that too. Uh, and all, you know, in scripture, you know, would lead us to think that heaven is up there. Jesus ascended. So we always think of it in an upward thought. And we always kind of think, yeah, that's the right direction to go. That when my life's over, I want to go up, not down. So, you know, we may not know a lot about the Bible, but we've got these basic thoughts about that. It's kind of like we're here down at the bottom and we're, we know that God's seated up there. And we're just going to work our way up this mountain and then we're all on the bottom and it's like go and we're all going to find our own different paths. He's up there and we're all going to arrive there, but we've all taken different paths. That is so not true. First of all, Jesus descended down to earth. The Jesus came to earth. He walked on this earth. Uh, He was crucified. He rose from the dead. Jesus came down to rescue us. And then Jesus not only rescued us and showed us the power over death that he is alive, that we can be alive, Jesus also showed us the pathway back to God. It isn't just everybody pick their own path and we'll all end up there together. There's three different ways that I drive to work. They're all within a couple minutes of each other. Okay? But eternity is not that way. There is one path, it's one person, and it's Jesus. So let's, let's just not believe that God said, just pick a path, create your own path, and I'll see you at the finish line. So here today, what did God say? What did God say? I think it's important for us in the last 10 minutes that we have together uh, that we uh, settle that question. What did God say? Last Sunday was Easter. I love Easter. I mean, I, even digitally, I just have to admit it. Like, it didn't, it was weird. <laughs> I've got to say that. Uh, it's just, it was, it was different. Not hanging out as a family, uh, not being together as a church, not seeing all the little kids dressed up in their, their cute little dresses. And not just all the excitement, energy uh, that happens at church on Easter. Now, I missed all of that. Uh, But the thing that, uh, this digital church Easter we had, uh, it doesn't diminish the fact of what happened. That Jesus rose again. That Jesus is alive. And because Jesus defeated death, I can defeat death. Because Jesus is alive. That even when I take my last breath, I can be then alive. I can be more alive than I've ever been. That is the power of Easter. And that is what God is directing us towards. And those are the facts about this. It does matter what we believe. And this is what God said. Jesus is the only way. Now, I already know a couple of you out there are like, that just bugs you. That's like, ah, man, like, you know, I know when you make a statement like this, uh, you split the crowd. You kind of divide the room. That when you make such declarations that, uh, that this is, this is the only way. See, uh, it was never meant to be a bunch of different ways. Now, you might go to buy a car, and there are a lot of choices. You're going to buy a compact car. There are lots of choices that you can make. You might want to buy an SUV. There are lots of choices. Sometimes that makes it even more difficult. Uh, You might want to buy a van. And there are lots of choices that you can make there. But your eternity was never designed that way. God's plan was never that way. He isn't one of many. He is the one and only That's why today uh, we're talking about this. Because when you see it that way, when you understand the clarity that God intended us to have, it it takes the so off that statement. It is, I have hope instead. I have hope. Our only hope of ever standing before God is Jesus. He is the only way. If you've got your outline there today, I just want to uh, I just want to uh, parallel these two thoughts today, uh, because I know I know there's a lot of religious stuff, uh, but today I don't want us to get hung up on religious stuff. I want us to understand the pure beauty of a relationship with Jesus. Here's what religion says: It's about me. 
It's about me. We just wrestled through a couple of those thoughts, and there are a lot more that it's about me. Uh, but you see, here's what relationship says. It's about Jesus. It's not about you. Working your way to heaven. It is about Jesus providing the way. See, religion says, man, I better do, 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 do. But relationship says, it's done. I mean, what do you, we've talked about it for the last two weeks. When, what did Jesus mean when he says, it is finished? Man, there is, there is a period on the end of that. There is an exclamation mark on that. There, there's not a line where you just put more stuff. There's not a plus mark there where you add more things to it. Jesus said, it is done. Here's the last one. If I obey God, he will love me. If I obey God, if I just try to obey God, we can't do this perfectly because of sin. Because of a sin nature that we are all inherently have. And so here today, man, face up to that, that sin nature that all of us have, that we can't make ourselves clean enough, perfect enough, uh, receivable enough for God to just, on our own merits, receive us into heaven. We need Jesus. We need Jesus. See, relationship says, because God loves me, I will obey. I will obey. Jesus couldn't have made it clear and when he said in John chapter 14, verse 6. Now I'm going to read a couple passages to you. I'm just going to go from one to the other. Listen to how clear, how clear God makes it about that Jesus is the only way. Matthew 7, 4, uh, Matthew, uh, 7 14, uh, in, and when we talk about uh, Jesus being the only way, uh, Jesus was an exclusive, he was the exclusive path in power. He was. Uh, but it didn't end with he was exclusive. Uh, it also moves to that it was inclusive, that there's an invitation, that we are all invited to join the family. It's exclusive how, but it's an inclusive invitation, and it's a narrow way. Matthew 7, 14 says, But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life. And only a few find it. I hope you find it. That's why we're here today talking about it. Today it's either confirmation that you have found it, or it's an invitation to you to receive it. John 14, 6 says, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Acts 4, 12 said, Salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name, no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. John 3, 36 comes in and says, Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life. Will not see life. For God's wrath remains on them. First Timothy makes it really clear. For there is one God, one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus. 1 John 5, 11 and 12 says, And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life, and whoever does not have the Son does not have life. Our last thought today, why get it? Why getting this right matters? Why getting this right matters? Your eternity lies in the balance. Your eternity lies in the balance. This is so important for you to get it right. So I want to say to those of you who have received Christ as your personal Savior already, uh, that you've already settled that. Uh, isn't it awesome to know that? That it gives us confidence to do life. Man, it gives us strength to do life. And even in the midst of all the stuff that's going on right now, uh, it gives us strength for that journey, too. It gives us courage for that journey, too. It erases the worry of when this life ends. Jesus, in John chapter 14, was telling the disciples that he's leaving. 
And then he comes in, he says, I'm going to prepare you, I'm going to prepare a place for you that you can be with me, but this is how you can be with me, it's through me. Jesus was either a liar, and if he was a liar, none of this matters anymore. But you can't, you can't say, yes, Jesus was telling the truth, and then add your stuff on top of his stuff. He is true, and he stands alone. And so he came then into John chapter 16. And I love what he says. I think we could really use it right now. For all of you who are in Christ, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. If you know Christ, you know peace. You know peace. In this world, you will have trouble. Isn't that truth? You will have the coronavirus. You will have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world, that I have overcome the world. Jesus didn't say that I overcame this one event. It's bigger than that. That I've overcome the world. He has overcome death. He has overcome worry. That I don't have to live a life of I hope so. That I can live a life of I know, I know. Why? Because I believe. And if you've never had a moment where you said, I believe, I want to invite you to do that right now. Maybe today as you were listening to this, there was a stirring inside of you. There was something going on. And don't deny it. Don't ignore it. Respond to it. Why don't you today pray this simple prayer of belief? of acceptance, of declaration that Jesus is the only way. Let me lead you in that prayer. It's a simple one. Right there, wherever you are listening to this, right there where you are, you can have your whole eternity changed. This is too big, too big for you to put off another day. This is your appointed time. Say yes to Jesus. Let's pray together. Father, today, I believe. I believe that Jesus is the only way. That Jesus is my only hope. So Jesus, today, I ask you to forgive me of my sins, to receive me into your family, to wash me clean, and with my heart, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Jesus, today, I believe. Amen. Well, thank you for listening today. I appreciate the time you've allowed me to uh, come into your home and uh, to teach you just a little bit more. Next week, we'll be back and we'll do it again. And to those of you today that settled your eternity, why don't you reach out to us on the screen? There's going to be a, uh, an email address that you can reach out to us. We'd love to celebrate with you. Uh, we'd love to help you as you start to grow and go forward from this. But I hope to every person that listens to this, I hope that you never, you never place your eternity in anything but Jesus Christ. This is too important. It is too big. God bless you. As we close out with, I believe. I think there's many of you out there today who in the midst of what we were, are going through, man, you can look it in the face and declare, I believe, I believe, I believe. And that Jesus is bigger than death. Jesus is bigger than anything we face in this earth. And Jesus is bigger than my doubts. God bless you.
Point Church. We want to thank you for joining us here online today. Isn't it awesome that we can sing those words that we believe in the name of Jesus? Now, I got my pillow here with me, and there's a couple things I want to address about that. First off, I want to say, no, I didn't bring it so I could hit people in the face when they say incorrect things about what God said, as the angel did in that video. Uh, Jerry already pointed out, I'm no angel, so I can't hit anybody with this pillow for sure today. The second thing I want to say is I didn't bring it because of Jerry's sermon, okay? I brought it just for an illustration for you. What I want to say is this, uh, a pillow res- or, or, or is a good example of something in our lives that, that when your head hits your pillow at night, hopefully that's a place of peace and a place of rest for you. And we wanted to use this as an example today to say that w- when you get to the point where your head hits the pillow at nighttime, if you're a person who has placed your faith in Christ, you believe in Jesus, just as we sang in that song, then when your head hits that pillow, it should come with a, a great peace, It should come with a a great feeling that comes over you, knowing that your eternity, as Jerry just talked about, is secure in Christ, knowing that you believe and trust in the Savior of the universe, knowing that you are in the hands of the Almighty when your head hits that pillow. And so we want to use that as an illustration. When you go to bed tonight, and I know that everybody's sleep schedules are off because of all this quarantine stuff and everything, but I know that when your head hits that pillow, there's a reason why we use that term, we sleep like a baby, uh, because babies are peaceful because they know that they're secure and they're taking care of their needs are met. And that's what we find in Christ. Our needs are met. Our eternity is secure. And so we just want to encourage you. This just a little illustration that when you see your pillow tonight, when you lay your head down, remember and be joyful and be glad in the fact that you belong to Christ. We hope you guys have a great week. Check out this video and we're going to roll out. Hi, everyone. We are so glad that you joined us for online church today. We hope that you enjoyed the worship and were encouraged by the message. We just want to remind you that you can find more information about our church on our website, crossroadsonline.tv, or our app, or our social media pages. Have a great day.